Hi everyone, I'm Yannick, co-founder and encrypted CEO at Archeum. And the title of my talk today is Encrypt or Die. And my goal is to lay out a path for you to not have to die in order to encrypt. And so we allow for anyone to encrypt everything with the encrypted supercomputer we're building with Archeum. And we're solving the age-old problem, I guess of everything by default being public on top of Solana, while some things should remain private. And so Archeum is a stateless encrypted computing network. And we utilize Solana for consensus and state management. And what we enable through Archeum is a new primitive on top of Solana, encrypted shared state. Encrypted shared state directly on chain, which enables programs to execute encrypted functions over that encrypted state without ever having to see the underlying data. And at the same time, we also enable encrypted off-chain compute with our network. And we've been building privacy on Solana now for three and a half years. And one year ago, we evolved from elusive into Archeum. And in that time span, the last year, we've done a lot of things. First of all, we've built Cerberus, our encrypted computing protocol from the ground up. We also built Arcus, our custom Rust compiler, allowing anyone to build encrypted applications. We just three weeks ago shipped our public testnet, which is accessible from Solana DevNet. And in that public testnet, we have live an encrypted order book where people can try out encrypted trading, where all information is hidden to the public. We also, in that time span, acquired our largest Web2 competitor and have started working with Web2 customers to actually use this technology on top of Solana. Um, in that time span, we also did substantial research. And all of the research that we are doing at Archeum is focused on being as practical as possible, um, because we believe that privacy needs to be practical and cannot be a theoretical problem. And so. Let me start by asking, why do we need privacy? Um, I think there's a lot of reasons why we need privacy. One big reason is that in order to onboard institutional and retail usage, we need privacy because in Web2, there's a substantial level of privacy those parties have grown custom to. And so if we, for example, look at institutional finance, nowadays more than 60% of daily US spot volume is being traded off exchange within dark pools. And so if we want to move these economic activities on chain, we need to have privacy to support those privacy needs for these actors. Um, and at Archeum, I think our approach really circles around enabling new, more powerful applications. And I think that's a key differentiator to how privacy has been attempted in the past. We don't see privacy as a political issue. I think privacy can only find adoption if it becomes a logical business decision to add privacy to applications, not simply by um, yeah, looking for some political narrative. And so we differentiate privacy into multiple categories, privacy 1.0 and privacy 2.0. Privacy 1.0 is what we have been doing in the past with Elusive, and privacy 1.0 functions around isolated local secret state, where all of the actors have some secrets that they want to maintain secrecy about, and so they keep that to themselves and utilize something like zero knowledge proofs to prove some statement about their secrets without having to reveal them. But all of those secrets remain in the custody of those parties, basically remain on their devices. And so we cannot have shared state. And all applications on top of Solana by default function with shared state. Everything on chain is shared state, right? So in order to add privacy to these kinds of applications where people need to interact, where we need to find collaboration, we need what we call encrypted shared state, where all of the state is encrypted and computations can be executed over that encrypted state without having to reveal any information. And at the same time, that encrypted state and the encrypted computations being performed on top of that can output information. They can, for example, decrypt some of the outputs of a computation and reveal that on chain. So some action can take place based on some public output produced by a computation or those outputs can be distributed to some specific party to have viewing access. And so that's this new form of privacy. 
privacy 2.0. Um, and some of the applications that this enables is, for example, private DeFi, where we can have fully encrypted trading, and also applications like private machine learning, which becomes increasingly interesting with more deep in networks when we see a lot of data being aggregated and using encrypted computing that data can be encrypted data analysis can be performed without undermining anyone's privacy making the entire networks more powerful and so the way it functions is that Arcium is this dedicated network that sits beside Solana on top of Solana there's programs that maintain encrypted state and they can call functions to be executed in an encrypted way within Archeum. Archeum processes that and settles those um, functions back to the dedicated program and those Outputs being produced by the encrypted computations can be encrypted, nobody sees them, can be public, everyone sees them, or can be encrypted in a way where some specific actors can see what's happening, which is required, for example, when you're building an encrypted order book. You don't want anyone to see the trades that sit in the order book, but once a trade has been finalized, the parties involved should be informed that their trade has been settled. And so, technology-wise, what Technologies can be used for privacy 2.0 are free MPC, FHE, and TEs. TEs, trusted execution environments, weren't an option for us at Archeum because they involve a high level of trust into yeah, trusted hardware manufacturers that then bring privacy and security promises. But um, over the last few years, we've seen a myriad of exploits surrounding those those trusted execution environments. And so that's why we want a purely cryptographic, trustless technology. Um, and the go-to solution would be FHE, fully homomorphic encryption. And FHE allows for the computation over encrypted data. The data is being encrypted and represented with some specific mathematical structure that then allows operations to be performed over that encrypted state namely additions and multiplications. And with a sequence of those operations, it's possible to change this encrypted state and perform computations as if the state wasn't encrypted at all. So that's the go-to technology. The big problem with FHE is that there's an immense computational overhead associated, mainly due to the multiplications involved. And I think the big problem not just for FHE, but for privacy in general, has always been that nobody wants slow, expensive, and feature-limited privacy, right? People don't want to go out of their way to have privacy. And so we need to sort of IBRL privacy, and FHE isn't the answer to that. So enter the protocol that we've developed at Archeum, Cerberus. And Cerberus lets us IBRL, it utilizes semi-homomorphic encryption, where we get rid of the super expensive multiplication and replace it with something called correlated randomness. And we also have some additional benefits for, for scalability. Um, with Cerberus, we basically take a computation and we split it into two phases, an offline phase and an online phase. The offline phase is being used to generate what's called correlated randomness. And that offline phase can be executed entirely independent of the actual computation, which is being executed in the online phase. And within that online phase, this previously generated correlated randomness is consumed. And all of that works through secure multi-party computation, MPC, with which you might be familiar through MPC wallets. But MPC in general allows a set of participants to jointly compute a function over distributed private data where all of the used inputs remain private. And the outputs, again, can be encrypted or anything. Um, and so how Cerberus functions is that values get encrypted. Those values then get posted on chain. So all participants in the computation have access to this encrypted state. And then each participant turns this encrypted state into so-called random secret shares. Those random secret shares then get distributed. Everyone runs their computations collaboratively. And at the end, an output is being produced. And so in a diagram, it looks like this. We have some encrypted inputs, which can sit on top of Solana. And then we, in this example, have three computing nodes, node A, node B, and node C. And those nodes take the encrypted shared state and some secret that only they have access to, and they are able to transform that into those secret shares, which they then exchange. Everybody runs their collaborative secure multi-party computation. They don't learn anything about the underlying secrets. And at the end, 
an output is being produced. And these kind of MPC protocols come with trust assumptions. And normally, the mainly used trust assumption in practice is the honest majority trust assumption, which we believe isn't a good trust assumption. Because if you think about free nodes running some computation over your private data, you have to trust that two out of those three nodes behave honestly. If it's 100 nodes, you have to trust that there's 51 nodes behaving honestly, not maliciously collaborating. And there's a difference between some distributed ledger finding consensus over block production and some nodes processing sensitive data. And so at Archeum for the Cerberus protocol, we picked the lowest possible trust assumption there is, the dishonest majority trust assumption. So you only need to trust that there's one single honest participant in a given computation, which means in the case of 100 participants, you only have to trust that there's one arbitrary honest participant behaving according to protocol. And in the past, these kinds of dishonest majority protocols have been quite impractical. Um, they might have the ideal trust assumption, but they have this high risk of DDoS in the computation, where some malicious player could undermine the output production by simply sharing some invalid data. And so for Cerberus, we've switched the security model from security with abort to security with identifiable abort, where this kind of misbehavior can be identified cryptographically, enabling censorship resistance, and then slashing for, for any misbehavior that is being detected. Um, and so to sum up, Cerberus functions in dishonest majority with MPC. And by having this constant trust assumption of always only requiring one single honest participant, this makes the protocol way more scalable. Because then we can operate with smaller sets of participants, which speeds up computations. Um, so in practice, we've seen um, being many orders of magnitude faster than state-of-the-art FHE. And so this diagram now makes way more sense. There's some cluster with an Archeum, some set of nodes that processes computations in an encrypted way. And so Archeum is this network of nodes that are being partitioned into arbitrarily large computation clusters. Those serve so-called MXEs, MPC execution environments, which, which get associated with programs on top of Solana. Um, nodes need to stake in order to be able to participate, which is important for our censorship resistance protocol. And then there's a um, yeah, priority fee mechanism with local um, cluster unions um, amongst those different clusters. And what we've also designed is Arcus, which is our custom Rust compiler, which supports the Rust core library. And that enables developers to add encrypted computing to their applications without having to understand anything about the underlying cryptography. They simply can write normal code, which then gets compiled by Arcus into a cryptographic format that our network can process. And so this is an example of how such code can look like, where you simply write normal Rust code and have a few additional macros um, that allows you to then specify this should be encrypted. So that's live currently on Solana DevNet. We also have an machine learning example here where there's a fully encrypted model and two encrypted inputs. And then at the end, nobody sees any of the inputs, also not of the prediction outputs for machine learning. Um, and so what we enable is encrypted programs where those programs maintain encrypted shared state and encrypted computations can be executed on top of those. You simply specify within your program, call this function, which then takes this state, and once the function is finished, execute this callback. Um, I also want to briefly talk about Manticore, which is our um, secondary MPC protocol, specifically for encrypted machine learning. Um, so we got that by acquiring our largest um, Web2 competitor last year. And what we were able to do earlier this year with this protocol, for example, is run the 16 billion parameter DeepSeq model in a fully encrypted way in our network. So you could send it an encrypted prompt, nobody sees your prompt, and you get back an encrypted output without anyone knowing what your prompt or output is. Um, and so we're offering all of that with an Archeum. We're offering a new form of composable encrypted computing because users want privacy, they don't notice, and applications should become more powerful through encrypted computing. Thank you very much.